Today I'd like to talk a little bit about how light impacts the progression and vulnerability to Alzheimer's. There's a lot of emerging evidence and research on how light impacts the body. It was 2017 when three researchers were awarded the Nobel Prize for their work on chronobiology. And that's just a big word for how light impacts the body. And what they discovered is that almost every cell in our body has a circadian gene or a circadian clock. And as light enters our eye, on the back of the eye, there's a thin layer of cells called the retina, and they are filled with light receptors, these opsins, melanopsins, that pick up on the different spectrums of light in our environment. That light coming in through our eye, into the back of the eye and the retina, picked up on by those melanopsin receptors, is then translated into an electrical signal that is sent to the center of the brain in the hypothalamus. It's something called the suprachiasmatic nucleus, which is our master circadian clock. So as this light enters our eye, it's transmitted into the center of our brain, into our master circadian clock. Now, like I said, these researchers found, and many have confirmed, that we are filled with circadian clocks. And almost every single cell in the body has a circadian clock. And as that information is transmitted to our master circadian clock in the hypothalamus, that information is sent out throughout the body to what researchers are calling peripheral circadian clocks. And those are just the circadian genes that are in almost every single cell in the body. That means that light is a dominant regulator of our biological function. And this is relatively new information. Now, what that means is aligning our rhythm with the circadian rhythm of the sun, the rising and setting of the sun, has a profound impact on our biology and Alzheimer's as well. That light signals in through the eyes, into the retina, it signals so many different pathways. It signals hormonal pathways, our sex hormones, our cortisol, inflammatory pathways. It signals our neurotransmitters such as serotonin, and dopamine. It allows for the release of these hormonal, inflammatory, and neurotransmitter pathways. When we don't get that light in the morning, our body doesn't know what time it is, and those cascades are not triggered. They're light-driven cascades. And so that means that if we can get out in the sun in the first hour or two of morning, as that sun is rising, as that blue light, as that ultraviolet light continues to grow, our melanopsin receptors in the retina in our eye pick up on that information and they tell that master circadian clock in the brain, okay, it's time to get our metabolism going, it's time to get our inflammatory pathways balanced, our hormones balanced, it's time to secrete serotonin and dopamine. And this plays directly into Alzheimer's. And we see with Alzheimer's a dysregulated inflammatory pathway. We see a dysregulated gut microbiome. A lot of patients, Alzheimer's patients, are tending towards small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, that we see a dysbiosis in the gut microbiome of these patients. We also see this rampant inflammation and what that light in the first two hours of daytime tells our body is it regulates those inflammatory pathways and it syncs that circadian rhythm with the gut microbiome. And that allows for less inflammation, it allows for less leaky gut or intestinal permeability. Pieces of food can get into the local blood circulation, they can go systemic, they can cause inflammatory cascades. These inflammatory cascades are not what we want when we're trying to prevent or address Alzheimer's. And light is a free, accessible, 
way to fine tune our gut health and our inflammatory pathways at the same time. So our circadian rhythm and that pathway of light through our eye into the brain to all those different peripheral clocks throughout the body, that is reinforced by a healthy circadian rhythm in the gut microbiome. And that rhythm also reinforces a healthy gut microbiome. We see in research with people with a jet lag, we see that their circadian dysregulation, where they're no longer aligned with the rhythm of the sun, profoundly impacts the composition of the gut microbiome and thus the inflammation. That dramatically increases the inflammation in the gut, which can cause leaky gut or intestinal permeability. As the sun sets at the end of the day, it mimics that red and infrared light that we see at sunrise. So we see the ultraviolet B start to wane, the ultraviolet A starts to wane, the blue light starts to leave the scene, and we're left with that beautiful, gorgeous sunset, that rich, orange and red light at sunset. That tells our body that it's time to prepare for that period of time of darkness. And all these things we've been talking about, these metabolic pathways, hormonal pathways, immune system pathways, they are set up in darkness. So many immune cells are set up in darkness. Our growth hormone melatonin is released from our pineal gland. Uh, in darkness. And there's this inverse relationship with cortisol where the blue light that starts to increase in those first couple hours of sunrise in the morning tells our body, okay, it's time to get going. It's time to get our metabolism online. It's time to function for the day. And as that blue light starts to wane and starts to decrease, it tells our body to do the opposite. It's time to prepare for repairing. It's time to allow for the release of melatonin. If we are in artificially lit environments after the sun goes down, it tells our body to keep secreting cortisol. And that has detrimental effects not only on our hormonal pathways, inflammatory pathways, and our immune system, but it blocks the release of melatonin from the pineal gland. And why is that so important? Because melatonin is a master antioxidant and it helps our body go into a deep sleep. And this is where we see that lymphatic cleanup crew come in and clean out the lymphatics of the brain. This too is quite new information. We didn't know about the lymphatic system um, you know, a decade ago. And this is exciting research showing that each night in darkness, our body goes in and the brain kind of opens up and allows for this flow of lymphatic fluid, allows for this cleanup crew to go in and recycle or remove any dysfunctional or damaged cells. This is really important when we are talking about Alzheimer's. There's research out there associating artificial light at night with an increased susceptibility to Alzheimer's. That circadian rhythm is so important. That natural light in the morning throughout the day is so important, but so is the darkness. So what do we do? Again, I'm here in the Pacific Northwest, and in the wintertime, it gets dark at 5 p.m., and we're certainly not bumping into each other in the darkness all evening. What we do is we switch to circadian-friendly lighting. Now, there's specialty lighting out there you can get that's rich in red and infrared light that blocks that blue light. Most of our modern lighting is LED lighting that again has that narrow band of blue light that tells our body, okay, it's noon, it's time to go. And that's the opposite of what we want to do after the sun goes down. So we can move to circadian friendly lighting. Now this is available in specialty shops 
or you can do something like I'm doing right here with this salt lamp. It is giving out these beautiful, rich orange tones, kind of mimicking a sunset or a fire, right? This red light, this orange light does not block the release of melatonin so that we can still have that glymphatic cleanup of the brain. That's so important. And we also want to lower the level of light. We want to turn off those overhead lights that signal to the body that it's noon and we need to keep going, right? So we lower not only the intensity of light, but we lower the level of light. We turn off those overhead lights. We switch to tabletop lighting. You can get uh, no blue light lights out there. My kids have clamp on no blue light, red light readers. We have uh, probably six or seven different salt lamps that we switch to. In the kitchen, we have incandescent lights that have red and infrared light. They don't block that release of melatonin from the pineal gland that's so important that we've been talking about. Blue light blocking glasses can be relatively inexpensive for the dramatic benefit we get for having our body circadian aligned and allowing for those processes that are so foundational and crucial when we're talking about preventing or addressing Alzheimer's. Thank you so much.